All right, here we go. Salute to Knicks Nation on this Tuesday afternoon. CP, the franchise of Knicks Fan TV here, joining you for another edition of the Bleach Report Q&A, man. Always happy to be back on with you guys. 12 games left in this Knicks season, man. The season has gone by very fast. A good season for the Knicks, 40 and 30 on the campaign, already exceeding regular season expectations. But the postseason is looming large. And for that, we got to talk about it for another session, man, because uh, these Knicks, as they currently stand, are in sixth place in the East. And just a few percentage points behind the Nets for fifth. So that's something to watch out for. Knicks and Nets kind of battling for that fifth seed. And, you know, if this season comes down tied, if by the end of the regular season they, they end up tied, the Nets would, um, it would go to the conference standings and whoever has a better conference standings would get that fifth seed. So with the two teams tied in their regular season matchups, it's going to be imperative for the Knicks to win as many games as they can in the East so that they can, you know, avoid dipping down to sixth. So there's that. Now the Knicks are in Portland for the final game of their West Coast trip. Will it be the Cam Reddish revenge game? That'll be left to be seen. Uh, So far, Dame Lillard and Jeremy Grant are both questionable in this game for Portland. We all know Jalen Brunson is not scheduled to play in this game, so the Knicks will be without their floor general once again. But we'll see if they can make it back home going 2-2 and on the trip. That was my, uh, that was my, my prediction going into this was uh you know two and two to two and two so the question for today is how do we fix this offense how do we fix this Knicks offense and you know going into this nine game winning streak man or coming out of this nine game winning streak this not Knicks offense was clicking on all cylinders man they were second in offensive rating first in net rating third in effective field goal percentage, and fourth in true shooting percentage. Now, obviously, having the floor general, Jalen Brunson, certainly accounted for a lot of that, but this Knicks offense was clicking, man. They were averaging close to 120 points per game. They were clicking on all cylinders. Now, through these last four games, they are 24th in offense, 30th in three-point percentage, 27th in three points make, and 29th ineffective field goal percentage so the offense is taking a dip now the Knicks did bounce back against the Lakers in a big way getting a much needed win out in LA but how do we get the Knicks offense back on track and salute to some of my people in the chat man salute to Piccolo 692 he says the Knicks offense is not improving with Tibbs at the helm and JR being the primary option well that's the thing we can't expect one thing we can't expect unfortunately is any schematic changes or any just drastic changes to this Knicks offense. It is what it is. It's an ISO heavy offense. It relies upon the isolation shot creation of Julius Randle and Jalen Brunson, but they've been operating very well out of that. And coincidentally, this Knicks offense still ranks top five in the league. Go figure. So it's not going to come schematically, unfortunately, knowing who the coach is. Shout out to T. Cole. He says, yes, sir. Knicks fan TV. T. Cole, how you feeling, man? Welcome back. Definitely. NY Impact 414 says that loss against the Hornets is going to come back to bite them. I hope not. But it's an ominous loss. Well, look, I, I just think they were riding high off of that Celtics win in double overtime. Shout out to producer uh, Asia, big time Celtics fan. She, didn't, she wasn't too pleased about that. I just felt like they were reeling off of that and um, a little fatigued. So it happens. You know, that it happens. Uh, B-Money in the chat says, stop with the iso ball and move the ball. Play complete team offense. And and he's absolutely, they are absolutely right on that. You know, the Knicks, despite having a top five offense, they're one of the worst teams in the league in almost every passing statistical category, whether it's assists, whether it's passes made, whether it's assists to field goals made, they are just not a good passing team. And as I said, it, it's very ISO heavy. So here's a couple of things that I feel like the Knicks could be doing to improve 
based on how they run their offense schematically right now and and who their personnel is right now. And if, if we go back to that Laker game, we saw a good example of that and it starts with their stars. Number one with Julius Randle. I thought with Randle playing faster, it allowed him to be more impactful on the game. You don't want him holding on to the ball. You don't want him stopping the offense in the half court, allowing defenses to key in on him, allowing defense to send those double teams, send the help defense. With Randall playing faster, making quick decisions, good things always come out of that. So you saw that in the Laker game. We got off to a hot start, 25 points in the first half, 33 points overall. I thought Julius was great in that game. You want to see him continue to play faster. And off of that, making those quick decisions, quick reads to make his teammates better. Because until Jalen Brunson comes back, Julius Randle is going to have to handle some of the playmaking responsibilities that Brunson was able to provide when he was healthy. So it comes down to Julius, one, playing faster, and two, making better decisions. Number two, RJ. Isn't It isn't a coincidence that with Jalen Brunson being out that R.J. Barrett has improved over the last couple of games, especially on the offensive end. He's been a, a lot more aggressive. He's finishing a lot better at the rim and just overall just being a bit more confident. Now, once Brunson comes back, they're going to have to figure that out, how to get R.J. Barrett going. But in the meantime, R.J. Barrett has been playing a lot better since Jalen Brunson came out, and he's going to have to continue to attack and make good decisions. One of the things I liked about RJ is even though his, his assist numbers weren't up there, he was a better passer in these past couple of games. So you want to see that continue because through Julius and RJ, the only way that the team is, is, is going to be able to flow, the only way the offense is going to be able to flow is through those guys being better playmakers, more effective playmakers within that offense. So they, that has to be there. But RJ ha has certainly improved. And then quickly, you know, these are your three stars until Brunson gets back. Quickly, six-man of the year candidate. I thought he bounced back well in both the Clipper and Laker game in terms of shooting efficiently. Now you want to see him also be able to play make a little bit more. Do they run some of the offense that Brunson was running through quickly, allowing quickly to get more paint touches, drive more into the paint, and be able to facilitate from there and have Julius Randle and R.J. Barrett playing off of Quickly's attacks. I think that would allow the offense to flow a little bit better. Play off of Quickly a little bit more. Take the ball out of uh, Randall's hand so he doesn't have to play make as much, which will cut down on his mistakes and turnovers and allow Quickly to facilitate more with that starting unit. I think that will certainly help. And Quickly, in that Laker game, certainly got back to things, especially as a shooter. So those three guys are going to be key. I think those three guys are going to be key. Now, Raider843 says, I think we shoot too many threes. Well, that's one of the things that Thibodeau wanted to do. He wanted to get to at least league average in terms of three-point attempts, which I don't think is necessarily a bad thing. You want to be close to a modernized offense. Uh, the key is hitting them. And part of the problem is uh, your three-ball shooters in your starting lineup, especially Quentin Grimes, he's got to knock those down, especially the wide-open three-point opportunities that he gets. He's got to knock those down. Another thing that I didn't like, especially in the Clipper game with Quentin Grimes, was he started off the game hot with, with seven points and then only shot the ball once in the second half. So that's part of the Knicks getting him the ball in his spots and him being more aggressive in terms of just being more aggressive in that offense and looking for his shot. We need Quentin Grimes to get going and be a little bit more consistent, especially on the offensive end, because that would certainly help. That would certainly help. Now, uh, Alvaro Pierre hit this one. This is my number two point in terms of how we get this Knicks offense back on track. He says, we need more Josh Hart and OB minutes. They mesh very well together. And one of those areas where you see them meshing well is in transition. This is their A game. Both Josh Hart and OB excel on the fast break. Over the last three games, the Knicks were leading the league in fast break points in 21 per game, and Josh Hart and OB were certainly key cogs in that. It's no coincidence that over those last few games that the bench has been playing better, and those guys have been contributing factors to it. So playing fast, playing in the fast break game, is another way to get this offense better because you're not playing against set defenses, established defenses. You're trying to catch them off guard, um, you know, with the numbers in your advantage on the break so that you can get easier high percentage points. And the Knicks were able to do that over that run. You hope that it could continue. 
another point on this one in terms of how to improve this this offense is uh, continuing to attack the glass, uh, continuing to attack the offensive glass. You know, the Knicks on average this season were are – uh, have offensive rebound percentage of 28.4. Over the last three games, that's gone up to 36.7. Now, Josh Hart accounted for a lot of that, especially in the Sacramento game. He's been brilliant on the offensive glass. Um, but as they continue to do that, it allows them to get more second-chance points. Uh, but the unfortunate thing is that over the last few games, even though they have been attacking the offensive glass and getting offensive rebounds, they've still been about middle of the pack in terms of getting those second-chance points. So, that's part of either Mitch Robinson when he's in there, he getting his, his he, he's getting his offensive rebounds. He's got to be more efficient in putting those back up. Or if they get those offensive rebounds and they're kicking it back out for three, you got to knock those down. You got to knock those down. As I said, starting the show, Knicks are thirtieth in three point percentage over the last three games. So you have to you have to knock those down when you get those opportunities because they're getting those second chance opportunities whether it's through Hart, it's through Mitch, it's through Isaiah Hartenstein, they're getting those hustle opportunities but you got to convert there. So, your stars got to be your stars. Get after it on the offensive glass. Get out in transition, continue to get out in transition. And those are some of my keys. Junior 718, shout out to Junior. He says, pick and roll and more drives to the hoop. OB and Mitch benefit from some lobs, definitely. But, you know, when you're talking about pick and roll, that starts with your guards. That, that goes back to my quickly point, getting quickly more involved as a playmaker and more drives to the hoop, getting more paint touches. We saw that in the Lakers game when it Randall, RJ, quickly, when they were attacking that paint, when they were getting into that paint, good things were happening for the offense, and they have to continue to do that. Uh, when we saw when they weren't able to do that in, in like the Hornets game, they didn't really have the legs. So you have to get into that paint, man, collapse that defense, force them to rotate or to scramble. And that way you can find your open looks, find your pockets in those holes in the defense. Ryan DeStud says we need uh, ball movement. When the chips are down, we fall into ISO way quicker than other teams. Yeah, that 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 is the Knicks M.O. They are the ISO Kings, man, and, and we absolutely need more ball movement. Knicks last in the league in assists. The assist numbers are very low, and so part of that is having moving the ball more and also executing when you have those wide-open looks, like I mentioned with Quentin Grimes. So I talked about their stars, getting after it on the glass, fast break points, and playing better defense. Look, as I said, schematically, this Knicks offense isn't going to change. I don't see them just becoming this motion offense where they're just whipping the ball all around. They're not going to be the 2014 Spurs. So with that being said, this Knicks defense is about middle of the pack right now in the league. For a Tom Thibodeau team, you want that to improve. And so I think part of that is they've, they've got to tighten up, especially in the paint, preventing high percentage buckets. That is the Knicks' claim to fame. They're number one in the league in terms of opponents' points in the paint at 45.6. In their last three games, they're giving up 53.3 points in the paint. They got to cut that down. Now, a lot of that is because they saw a lot of tougher players in the paint. Mitch had a tough time with Sabonis. He had a tough time with Anthony Davis, although Isaiah Hartenstein did a good job on Anthony Davis. Um, you, you saw Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, those guys getting get attacking the paint in the Clipper game. So you want to see that improve because the Knicks got away from their A game, especially defensively, in preventing points in the paint. That is their strength. You got to build on top of your strengths. And if you can't do that, it's, it's going to be even tougher on the offensive end if you can't outscore the opponent. So part of generating good offense is slowing the other team down and getting some stops on the defensive end. And I think the Knicks need to work on getting back to that in order to turn things around. Cara Bliss in the chat says, five minutes for Rose and Fournier. Certainly a possibility. I mean, how have you guys been feeling about McBride's minutes? I think McBride, especially in the Laker game, I thought he came up big. For me, in that nine-man rotation, without Brunson, McBride is the wild card because you want to see him. You know defensively he's going to be there for you. He's going to play hard. He's going to play smart. He's going to play tough. But offensively, you want to see McBride knocking down a couple of shots, and he did that in the Laker game, and I thought he earned his minutes in that Laker game. He was a big proponent. He was a big factor 
in delivering that win for the Knicks bench and for the Knicks. So shout out to Cara Bliss. Uh, Chick D33, run more play for OB backscreen. Absolutely. You want to see OB get more involved and not just standing out there on the three-point line. Who else we got in here? That boy Mikey J says, Isaiah Hartenstein can start shooting open threes, adds another level to the second unit. Yeah, he takes he takes some here and there, but I wouldn't really necessarily rely on that. I think you have enough in that second unit to, to get you some threes. Between Obi, when RJ's out there running with that second unit, he's going to shoot some. If IQ's out there with that second unit, when Brunson comes back, he's going to be shooting threes. I think you have enough three-point shooters off your bench. You don't have to rely on Hartenstein. But Hartenstein, what he is giving you is, is quality defense and offensive rebounds. I think Hartenstein has been playing like the guy that the Knicks were looking to acquire in the offseason. He's, he's starting to take form as a backup five. Starting to take form as a backup five. So to everybody in the chat, once again, on this Bleacher Report app, CP Franchise here, we are talking about how do we get this Knicks offense back on track? How do we fix things to get them going into playoffs? 12 games left. <clears throat> 12 games left. And they're going to be heading into playoffs. And we want to know which Knicks offense is going to show up. We know missing Brunson is a big hole. It's a, it's, it's a big hole in things. And as I dropped some of those stats, you know, in that nine-game winning streak, they were second overall in offensive rating. Second overall. Now, over the last three games, they've, they've dropped to 24th just during that stretch. They're still a top-five offense, but during that stretch, they've been brutal. 24th in offense, 30th in three-point percentage, 27th in three-point made, and 29th in effective field goal percentage. So the question is, which, who is this Knicks offense that's going to step into the playoffs? Is it the one that got them out to that nine-game winning streak? Is it the one that we've seen now? Is it somewhere in between? Because one thing's for sure, you can't go into the playoffs if you're not going to shoot the ball efficiently. You got to get efficient shots out there in the playoffs or else you're going to be a quick out. So I have to see what happens. Number five on this list is obviously getting Jalen Brunson back healthy. He's not going to play tonight against his Portland Trailblazers. So we'll see once they come back home to New York, they'll have Wednesday, Thursday, Friday off, and then Saturday matinee against Jokic, the MVP candidate, and the Nuggets. So we'll hope that we get the floor general back by that time, in time for the final 10 games of the season. Because he's needed. He is much needed. And you could see, whether it's in crunch time, whether it's just you know quelling the momentum of the opponent, Brunson covers up a lot of the offensive futility on this team. He covers that up a, a ton. And so we're going to see just how effective that is as we move into the playoffs. QB238 says RJ is currently the best out of the top three picks, period. Availability matters most. Hey, that's a fair take. And you see what's going on with John ja Morant. And, and, and look, you, you hope... He's able to rebound. He's in a rehab, as they say, rehab facility in Florida. Seems to be more to the story, to the issues that surrounding him. A lot of rumors about whether or not this, this could be an extended absence. It keeps stretching longer and longer and longer. So we'll see. We wish him well. But yeah, he's not available for his team. Zion continues to be beset by injury. Low extremity injuries, hamstring, foot, knee. Unfortunate. Because when Zion's cooking, he's really great. He's great to watch. Right now, RJ's the last of the Mohicans, right? And you got you got Darius Garland doing good things with the Cavaliers. But it's good to see RJ picking things up after uh, over the last few games. No question about it. Bro Migo says Portland doesn't have a great big. Why won't Tibbs try Randall uh, Ob front court? We've seen it, man. It's it's not going to happen. Uh, that ship has sailed. And with Hartenstein playing as well as he has, both defensively and on the glass, getting rebounds, he's going to get those minutes. The team needs it, especially when we talked about uh, the, the futility of the offense. And, you know, defense is kind of average right now. So I just don't see uh, I, I just don't see the Randall Obi thing doing much anymore. I just don't see it. We've been looking for it for three years. 
It just hasn't been there. BK's lost son says we got to do better in the third quarter. Okay. Uh, that that's fair. I mean, over, over the past few years, I think you certainly make that case. Right now, Knicks are uh, 24th in league in third quarter points, so that that's a fair take. They're eighth in second quarter points per game, f- and and 13th in first quarter points per game. Obviously, Randall leading the way there. So certainly have to get better there. Imwan Brown, shout out to Imwan Brown. He says, "Let's bring back Mellow." A lot of fans want to bring back Mellow, man. I'm going with Dylan Brooks. I'm, I'm with Dylan Brooks. I'm on Dylan Brooks' side of that. I don't, I don't think we don't need that, man. Shout out to Mel. That's one of my favorite players, though. I just don't think we need that. Jazzy LMAO says someone like Harden would help the Knicks a lot with playmaking, better shooting, better ISO. Sure, but that, they, they don't have a shot at Harden. From what we hear, Harden could be going back to Houston. And I wonder where that leaves Joel Embiid. It's left to be seen. Another conversation for another day. King Dark, get the ball out of Randall's hand and move the, and move the ball. This is one of my keys earlier. Julius needs to play faster when he does good things happen and allow IQ to play make a little bit more kind of in that Brunson role so that you, you can cut down on the Randall turnovers, cut down on the Randall, you know, getting the ball on, 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 um, at, at, the, at the elbow or the top of the key when he should be really going to work below the free throw line, below the break. And if he is going to operate at top of the key, I, I do like when Aaron Randall is operating out of that nail rather than on the elbows because you, you can see the court better. They can space the floor a lot better for him. And you don't have to worry about having to make cross-court passes when that weak side defender is right there waiting on you. So I think it gives him a little more flexibility when he's operating at the nail and not out of a post-up, facing up at the nail and make his move. D07 says, we need Grimes to be more physical on defense and become more of a dog. I think, I think, he's, been, I think he's been good on defense. Um, Laker game left a lot to be desired. D'Lo ate him up. That was a little bit of a surprise, but it happens. This is the NBA, man. Scores are scores. D'Lo is still a talented offensive player, and Sunday night, it was his night. Grimes had no answer for him. It's one of those nights. But I, overall, I think I, I, I'm okay. I'm good with Grimes' defense. But it's sure, it could definitely improve. Jay Wiles, 34, says, trade Barrett, Obi, and a few first-rounders for Jimmy in this offseason title contenders. I don't see it. Does Jimmy Butler make us title contenders? I don't see it. And a few first rounders for an aging Jimmy Butler. Uh, I don't. I don't. That's not a trade I would make. Ryan Beatles way says trade Randall. It's over. Damn. It's a cold world, man. Julius having Julius having a great season for the Knicks, man. You gotta wait. You gotta wait. Let's see what happens in the playoffs. See how they respond. See how they play. And take it from there. Bro Migo says we need to turn those Rose 48 contracts into contributor. This is all season, perhaps kick the tires and Gordon Hayward. Big wing that will move RJ back to his natural position. We did have that conversation on, on Knicks Fan TV. What were some small forward options that you would be looking at in the offseason? You know, I'm not I'm I'm not really a big Gordon Hayward guy. He's never healthy for a full stretch. Defensively needs work. Yes, he is a big wing. He's a talented scorer when he's available. Not saying he wouldn't help this team, but it really de- it really depends on the price. It really depends on the price. Uh, who else we got in here? Salute to everybody in the chat, man. Bleacher Report, Knicks fan Q and A, CP the franchise here. Uh, talking about the keys, the key ways, the five ways that we can get this Knicks offense back on track. How do we fix these things? And number one, I said the stars need to be the stars. For Julius Randle, it's playing faster. Defer an IQ to playmake. R.J. Barrett continued to attack and make sound decisions as a playmaker. One of the things we saw, especially in that Laker game with R.J. Barrett, was he was just a lot more patient on his drives. It's not just put your head down and, and go left, go, go straight to the basket and hope for good things to happen because a lot of times you don't see where the help defense is coming from and you're forcing up junk. So I thought he did a good job of being more disciplined on his attacks, being more patient, 
finishing a lot stronger, be more aggressive, and then also looking to pass uh, when, when necessary. I thought RJ leading that second unit in the Laker game, that was the best I've seen him with that second unit all year. And that's important because once Brunson comes back, RJ has to own those minutes uh, with that second unit. No question about it. Incognito says, up the assist, attack, 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 trust one another, play for one another. It's fair points. It's fair points. Because the scheme's not changing. So the assists, a lot of the assists are going to have to be generated or started by your three stars right now, which is Julius, RJ, and IQ. And it has to flow from there. So they have to do a better job of getting themselves in the position to make plays for the team or seeing where that second pass can come from off of their pass to generate good offense. They're going to have to do it by committee. Absolutely going to have to do it by committee. I won't lose 187v3 says last game against the Clippers. Uh, Julius reminded me of Julius last season. has got to be better to hold the temper. That's a fair point. That's a fair point. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt. There was one bad game. He blew up. He imploded. I think it cost the Knicks the game. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt and see how he bounces back stronger and how he handles the adversity in the playoffs because that was the type of atmosphere that he's going to see in a seven-game series. T-Ball 77, nobody would be better than McCall Bridges. Too bad we can't get him. Hey, we should have drafted him to begin with, T-Boss. Should have drafted McCall Bridges. You won't have to worry about going to have to trade for him because he's getting ready to break out. He is getting ready to break out. Irvin Noel, better free throw shooting, and we'd have 45, 50 wins. We easily get to the line. We have to make teams pay for it. Yep, I think he hit the, I think he hit the nail on the head there as well. Knicks, in terms of um, free throw attempts, number eight in the league in free throw attempts. Oh, I'm sorry, that was that was Portland. Definitely, definitely not the Knicks. Uh, they're number four in the league in free throw attempts. The New York Knicks are, and number twenty two in free throw percentage. Knicks in Portland tonight, last game of the West Coast trip. Will it be a Cam Reddish revenge game? Throw some predictions, score predictions in the chat. Throw some score predictions in the chat. What do you think about this game tonight? Uh, you can join us and on Knicks Fan TV for live play-by-play. My guy, JD Sports Talk. And then after that, we'll be on for uh, Knicks Post Game Live, taking your calls, breaking the game down, analysis, highlights, all that good stuff, man. That's on YouTube.com slash Knicks Fan TV, man. So let me know what you guys think about this game tonight. And uh, in the meantime, I will catch up with you guys next week for another edition of this Knicks fan Q&A, man. So salute to everybody that was tapping in today. CP the Franchise, man, signing out. Peace.